I read this piece at the end of that evening, and Matt asked me to come and read it to you tonight. So I said, yes, you can go and take this. It's horrible. <laughs> but anyways, I'm happy to be here. And I'm also, and I'll reiterate sort of what we spoke about at the end of that evening. There was just this beautiful honoring of all, the, all you beautiful young minds, I'm just so excited. I am that you're that you're so heartfelt already, and you're so open, and you're so smart, and you're looking out in the world and going, "What are we doing? What are we doing? We got to change this." And you're doing something about it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. So I wrote this piece years ago now. It was um, right after 9-11, actually. Because I sat on the couch with my little two-year-old at the time and watched those Twin Towers fall. And I went, oh my God. There were people dying right before my very eyes. People that had to make that horrendous decision to jump or burn to death. And I, it just, it affected all of us. But it really just in my own living room as I sat comfortably on my couch. And I just went, ah! It was a huge awakening for me. Huge. Because I thought, I just was angry, 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 angry that we as human beings were so disconnected from who we really were that we could actually witness an event like that. And it just broke my heart in that moment. A good breaking of my heart because I think sometimes a heart has to break in order to become whole again. And I consciously, after that event happened, made a very conscious effort to not withhold my own love, to do whatever I could to allow myself to be loved wherever I went. And as you well know, that's not easy to do. I'm still working on it. I am not perfect by any means. Um, but we do it together. And it seems to be much easier when we do do it together. So I appreciate forums like this, where we are striving for that, because that's what's necessary in order for this world to change. It starts here. So that's what this piece is about. It pretty much channeled through me. I'm a writer, and sometimes I just get this feeling of writing. Oh, I need a pen. And that's what happened here, and I just wrote it. So I hope you enjoy it. It's called The World is Our Mirror. The destruction in the world, everything from war to murder, apartheid to the Ku Klux Klan, AIDS to cancer, starvation to obesity, genocide to rage to anger to blaming others, is a reflection of our inner selves. The world reflects what is inside of us. It is a gauge of how we are doing internally as a collective society. There are wonderful people in the world who do wonderful things, who risk judgment, and sometimes their lives to rid the world of destruction and hatred. These are people who share their hearts, live life with passion and purpose, and teach us how to make a difference. People like Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, and the local volunteer. Being with these people or listening to them makes us feel good because they reflect all that is good within ourselves. We witness horrendous acts of injustice in the world. Genocide, starvation, holocaust, war, abuse, and oppression all exist because of fear. And they reflect the fear inside ourselves. Fear we are not good enough. Fear of opening our hearts. Fear of speaking the truth. Fear of being as loving and as bright as a light as we were created to be. We are not born into this world fearful. When we are born, we are filled with God's pure love, and we know how amazing and beautiful we are. That is why it feels so good to be around babies. They reflect the pure love we are born into this world being. And when we touch a baby, we touch, for a moment, that place inside us that is pure love, a place we forgot existed. 
Why did we forget? Why did this pure love become contaminated with fear? Why did we become too afraid to shine brightly? It is because we grew up in a world of judgments and conditions, a world based on fear. And when we are exposed to the fear of others every day and see images of the collective fear of society, when we see the Twin Towers crumble or an emaciated child lying open-eyed and lifeless on the side of a dusty road, it is hard to keep shining. We get worn down, lost in a million little messages that whisper, you cannot make a difference. You are not good enough. Don't be too happy. Others will be jealous and they won't like you. Eventually, we shrink. We make ourselves smaller than we were meant to be so we can fit in and feel accepted. Over time, we completely forget who we truly are and become who we are conditioned to be. It is painful to remember what we gave up, but it is more painful to forget. Subconsciously, we store resentment and anger toward ourselves for betraying who we really are, and we begin to blame everyone around us, our spouses, our mothers, our fathers, our children, our governments. We blame everyone for the pain and emptiness we feel inside so we don't have to go within and face the truth of our own betrayal. We stuff the truth far, far down, and we keep busy going to school, finding a job, finding a spouse, having children. We do all the things we are supposed to do, and we are happy because we are supposed to be happy. But in those rare quiet moments, when there are no distractions, we touch that part within ourselves that remembers what we gave up, and we hear a little voice whispering, there is something missing. There is something missing. The fact is, we don't feel as happy as we pretend to be. We often feel disconnected and separate from people around us. But when we are honest enough to acknowledge these feelings, we judge ourselves to be bad. We make ourselves wrong for feeling incomplete. Most of us, when we get to this place, if we ever do, push the discomfort down again. It scares us to look at the truth about how we feel. It scares us to remember who we gave up in order to fit in. We avoid the truth by diving into motherhood and living for our children, by working longer and longer hours to support our families, buying bigger houses, more expensive cars, smoking, drinking, gambling, committing adultery, blaming others, going to war, and judging ourselves and everyone around us. The longer we avoid being who we are meant to be, the more angry and depressed we get because subconsciously we really hate ourselves for turning down our light. The light in the world is dim. Some places are almost completely dark. This is because the resentment, anger, and fear we feel inside ourselves as a collective group is building and is reflected in our world. Wars reflect our inner, inner hatred and self-destruction. Starving children reflect our starving spirit and our ability to ignore the truth. The disconnection that allows a person to kill another human being reflects the disconnection from ourselves. Emotional, physical, and sexual abuse reflects abuse toward ourselves. Diseases such as AIDS, cancer, and the heart attacks reflect the dis-ease we feel inside ourselves. The neglect and uncaring manner in which we treat the earth and our atmosphere reflects the neglect and uncaring manner with which we treat ourselves. The world is our mirror. The destruction of others is the destruction of ourselves. The question is, are you willing to look at the reflection? Are you willing to look inside yourself? It takes courage to step into the fear and face the truth of your own betrayal. I know because I have done it. A major understanding of just how much I had rejected my body and sexual energy, life force energy, happened in a workshop I took called The Essence of Sexuality. In a breathing exercise, feelings of being ugly came up for me to feel. As a teenager, I had an overbite, not buck teeth per se, but close. I couldn't close my lips together. My profile horrified me, and I would often hide my mouth with my hand. Years later, I had jaw surgery and fixed the problem. <clears throat> I 
I learned in that workshop that fixing the problem externally doesn't always fix the problem internally, that the deep feelings of being ugly and feelings of rejection still lingered in my system and had to be cleansed. I cried out the feelings I felt as a teenager around being ugly. I stood in the center of my own betrayal and felt the pain of self-rejection. It hurt a lot, but eventually the pain fell away and I was left with the feeling of love and acceptance for myself. <clears throat> in the process of recovering my true self, I had to face my own betrayal in many areas, not just rejection of my body parts, and learn to forgive. I had done the best I could. I did not know better. And when I found compassion for me, I found compassion for the people in the world. And I saw beautiful, passionate, heartfelt, alive spirits beneath all the fear. For the world to heal, we must all take responsibility to heal ourselves. The events of September 11th reflected this powerful message. The planes falling from the sky and the towers crashing to the ground reflected the crippling fear within us. It was a call to let our masks fall. It was a call to wake up and face the truth about how we really feel and who we really are. The world is our mirror. It reflects what is inside us as a collective group of people, and it reflects what is inside us as individuals. The truth is, the truth in the reflection isn't pretty. The mirror of the world is full of fear, pain, guilt, anger, destruction, and emptiness. But it is possible to change this. It is possible to create a reflection of love, compassion, joy, and connection. But the only way to change the reflection in the mirror of the world is to recover our true selves. And the only way to recover our true selves is to face the truth in the reflection.